All right, ladies and gentlemen. So today what I want to do is I want to kind of finish up the uh, debate over the National Bank and fight over the National Bank and really kind of explain how the National Bank came to be. Now, fun fact, we no longer have a national bank. We have a federal reserve system that gets started later, but the national bank is actually going to be killed by Andrew Jackson. Uh, and we'll talk about that much, much, much later uh, in the year. But um, the national bank did last until Andrew Jackson's presidency. So I want to take a look at um, kind of review how or why the national bank was created. And then I want to go ahead and talk about how it actually got passed and how Hamilton got Jefferson to actually agree to the National Bank. So just to kind of review, just to kind of take and help us to understand, just to refresh our memories, not help us understand, but refresh our memories. Um, Hamilton is looking to pay back the debt that the United States owes from the Revolutionary War, all $76 million of it. So he believes that the best way to really kind of manage paying back that debt and manage kind of any debts that might, that the United States might owe or might be owed to the United States is to create a national bank. Um, and the reason he wants to really pay back the debts is to kind of make the economy of the United States stronger and the national bank in by managing that debt that's either owed to the United States or that the United States has to pay, by managing that, that will make it more likely that that debt is paid back or that debt is managed. And by managing and paying back that debt, that makes the economy stronger. So that is why Hamilton is doing this, and that is what Hamilton wants to do. Now, if you remember yesterday, I mentioned and talked about how Jefferson really didn't want the national government to take each individual state's debt, the $25 million that the, the total that all 13 states owed. And he didn't want that because Virginia didn't owe as much as other states did. It owed much less than other states did. And he didn't want to see the taxes on the citizens of Virginia go up because of other states like Massachusetts or New York. So Jefferson opposes this idea. He's not in favor of it. He hates it. Plus, Jefferson also looks at the creation of the National Bank as something the government cannot do. Remember, Hamilton being a loose constructionist believes that the federal government has the right to do anything reasonable that the Constitution does not specifically say that the government can't do. So if it doesn't say it, that means that the government has the right to do it so long as it's reasonable for the government to do. Now, Jefferson looks at this. That's what's called being a loose constructionist, by the way. Hamilton is a loose constructionist. Jefferson, on the other hand, is a strict strict constructionist. And he believes that if it doesn't say that the national government has the right or the power to do it in the Constitution, then you cannot do it at all. So that is kind of Jefferson's justification for why the government cannot create the national bank. And his loose constructionist belief is why Hamilton believes that the national government can create the national bank. And being the secretary of, Treasure, of the treasury, Hamilton believes that this is the best thing for the United States and it will help to make the economy of the United States stable. And that's why he wants to do it. So Jefferson and Hamilton are at odds with each other in the cabinet. They do not agree. They cannot get past this until it is decided and they decide, Jefferson and Hamilton decide to reach an agreement. Now, as we know, Hamilton wants his debt plan passed. He wants to take on the debt of the states. He wants to pay off the debt and he wants to create the national bank. That is going to make the economy of the United States stronger, more stable, at least in Hamilton's view. On the flip side of that, Jefferson and his partner Madison, both from Virginia, James Madison, both from Virginia, want something as well. 
Now, many government officials and many people in the government and many of the founding fathers believed that New York City was going to be the capital of the United States. And in fact, for a short time, New York City is actually the capital of the United States. However, Jefferson and Madison and other government officials and other senators and congressmen in the South want the capital of the United States to be moved farther south because many thought that New York City would be the capital and that would give the northern states too much power. So Jefferson and Madison want it brought a little further south to try to give some of the southern states a little more power. Now, Hamilton doesn't really care where the capital is. That's not his concern. His concern is the National Bank and his concern is his debt plan. So in June of 1790, Hamilton, Jefferson, and Madison get together, they meet over dinner, and they have, they kind of build this agreement and set up this agreement. And what this agreement says is that Jefferson and Madison will convince all of the Southern senators and congressmen, Southern state senators and congressmen, to vote for Hamilton's debt plan if Hamilton can convince the Northern senators and congressmen, senators and congressmen from the Northern states to allow the Capitol to, to be moved to Washington, D.C. Now, Washington, D.C. at this time is not a city. It's built based on this agreement. Um, Washington, D.C. is actually right on the border of Maryland and Virginia. So it moves it a little farther south, not all the way down into Georgia per se, but it is going to move the capital farther south to give Jefferson and Madison what they want. So just to reiterate and just to repeat, in order for Hamilton to get his debt plan passed, in order for Jefferson and Madison to convince the Southern state senators and congressmen to support Hamilton's debt plan, Hamilton has to convince Northern state senators and congressmen to agree to allow the capital of the United States to be set and moved to Washington, D.C. on the border of Virginia and Maryland. If each side can get their respective senators and congressmen to agree, then they will both get what they want. Hamilton's debt plan will be passed and Washington, D.C. will become the capital of the United States. And considering that Washington, D.C. is now today the capital of the United States, it's obvious that they were able to get this passed and they were able to agree on this and they were able to have a successful agreement and establish both the National Bank and the fact that Washington, D.C., would be the capital of the United States. They were obviously able to reach an agreement on this. So that is how the debt plan was passed. That's how the National Bank was created. That's how Washington, D.C. became the capital of the United States. So what I would like you guys to do now, now that we've kind of had that explanation and gone through that explanation, excuse me, is I have another video for you guys to listen to, not really watch. Uh, this is another song from Hamilton called The Room Where It Happens. So this will help a little bit to explain how this agreement was reached and uh, should be a fun way to help you to understand how they came to the agreement and how the National Bank was formed. If you have any questions, guys, if any of this was confusing, please feel free to reach out to me um, during my office hours. Uh, this should be a fun way to kind of summarize what we were just talking about. Uh, listen to it as much as you want and then make sure you have your key terms done for Monday the 30th. Again, if you have any other questions, please reach out to me. Hope to hear from you guys. Have a great day. Again, if you need to reach out to me, guys, make sure you do that. I will clarify any questions that you have. Other than that, enjoy the video, enjoy the song, 
Have a great day, guys.